G'day guys and welcome back to me lab. Now in this video, our very last Super Bogan Brothers Godot 4 tutorial series um, main lesson, we're going to be making a start and end screen so that it's a bit more polished. So there will still be more videos after this one, but this is our last main lesson. The rest will be a bit sporadic, but let's uh, jump on over, have a look at our WWSS and then get stuck into it. Alright, jump on into your Godot project and let's get stuck in. This won't take too long, there's going to be two new scenes that we make, but effectively each scene will be the same as each other. So it shouldn't take us too long to do it, and by the end of this you'll be an old hand at it and not need my help at all, but let's go through it. So. We want to start off by creating a new scene. So if you recall, we go to the very top here and we click on the plus sign. That then gives us a new basic scene without any nodes in it yet. So we need to add our node. We're going to click on other node. And we're going to look for that canvas layer, which we used when we did our GUI. So we're going to use the canvas layer to create a kind of interface for our start and end screens. All right, so we've made our canvas layer. Let's call this one our start um, canvas layer. And then we're going to add by clicking on the plus two buttons. So you click on it, um, go back to start again, click plus, look for button again. So now we've got button one and button two. Let's change these buttons to be start and quit. So our player always has a way out if they didn't want to actually play the game. So we've got our new canvas layer called start, our button called start, and our button called quit. Excellent. So now our start um, canvas layer or our scene needs a script. So we click back on our root node, our start canvas layer, and we click on the script with the little green plus, and then it comes up giving us this one here. That is fine, create that. And that is all we have so far, but it does not end there. So let's click on our start button again, go across to our nodes in our inspector there, find pressed, double click on that, and we're gonna signal pressed back through to our script here. And then we're gonna do the same with quit. So now I click on quit, come across to my nodes, find pressed, double click on it, click connect. And now you've got those two um, functions passed through to our script. So what do we want to do with these two functions? We will set up the GUI in a minute, but let's get our code done first. So for our start one, we wanna be able to set it up so that we get um, it, well, it just goes and accesses the um, first scene that we've got, right? So let's replace this pass with get tree, change scene to file, res world.scene. So what we're saying there is when we press the start button, which we'll set up in a second, it's going to look through our um, tree here and change the scene to whatever this file is. So we can change this to anything, but of course we called our main world world, so that's what that one's there for. And you can probably guess our quit is gonna be very, very similar, right? So it's only a little bit different. We're still doing get tree and all that, but we don't need to play a scene. We just need to quit. So get tree, change scene to file, or get tree, quit. That's it, that's all this script is for. Let's save it as start. Now let's go and have a look at our 2D scene and actually set that up. So what generally happens when we do this is everything gets dumped in the corner, right? So I've zoomed into our corner here and we've got our two buttons, start and quit. So I'm gonna click on quit. I'm gonna click on our inspector window and I'm gonna type quit in there so we know that's what that one is. And then of course for our other one, it's going to be start. So now I've got two buttons, one called start, one called quit, but we need to try and make them look good in our, um, in our window. So rather than having them tagged to the top uh, left here, let's come across to our inspector window. Let's go down to layout and scroll down a bit. And then we get down to this anchors preset. And at the moment it's set to top left. I actually want to change that to center. And I want to do that for both of them. So layout, top left, change it to center. Now let's go to our center and have a look at what that's done. So now it's put them both on top of each other, which is a bit annoying, right? So let's move our quit down underneath, but I think they also need to be a bit bigger. So let's just make these bigger like that. Make that one about the same size. All right, I think something like that's gonna do. So let's save that scene. And uh, the next thing we need to do is change our project settings so that the first scene that loads is this one. We don't wanna load straight into our world anymore. So when we very first started, we actually, um, 
checked our game and we set it up so that it was always that world that would play. So we don't want that to happen. So to change that, we go project, project settings, and then we go to run um, up here. And we want to change that from world to start. There we go, to start. So I'm going to close that. And so this means now whenever we load our game, it loads into our start scene instead of into our world scene. So why don't we give that a test and see if it works. Go on the top, click on our play. There we go. The first place we go is into our start screen. Now we can click on our start button and hopefully this takes us into the game. And it does. All right. The next thing we need to do is our like our game over scene, right? Because if we die at the moment, once, do do do, twice. And thrice. All right, it doesn't actually take us to a game over scene, it just queues free. Very, very boring. So we're gonna get rid of that. Um, and we're gonna make a new scene. And the last thing we'll do is change it so that we go to that scene um, when we die. But let's have a look here. All right, so we've got our start scene, now we're gonna make a new one. So we're gonna create a new scene, click on other node, it's gonna be a canvas layer again. We're gonna rename this one to game over. We're gonna create two buttons just like we did before. All right, we've got our two buttons. Click on the first one. Let's call this one um, play again. And then we'll call our second one quit. So very much the same sort of setup, right? Now I'm gonna rename our buttons. So the first one was called, um, I'll just call it start and quit like we did with the others. It'll keep the coding simple, start and quit. All right, that's what they're called. Uh, now we need to set up our layout just like we did before. So we go center, change to the other one, layer, center. Now let's us come into the center here and get these laid out right. Actually, play again on the top and quit underneath. But what we're going to need to do is make these bigger again, aren't we? So let's do that too. Something like that. So we'll save that as game over scene. Excellent. Now, just like before, we're going to add a script. So we click on game over. We click in our little um, script thing and we're going to call it game over. That is fine. Now we've got to um, signal these through again. So we click on our start one. We click on node, double click pressed, connect. Do the same thing for the other one. Just like that. Here they are here, just like before. And now you can guess what we're going to do, right? So our quit function is going to be exactly the same. We just want to quit out and our start one is going to be exactly the same as before. So we're starting again. There we go. So when we, oops, I think I've done some spacing issues there. Is that better? There we go. All right. So in each of our scripts, we've really only got these two things going on and that is to do with those signals. So that's all well and good, but there is one more thing I think we need to do. Instead of queuing free when we die, we want to load this particular scene, don't we? So that's the last thing we really need to do and I'm pretty sure we handle that in our player. Yep, uh, so here we go. If global play, I remember now, we built in a bit last lesson, didn't we? So that it would be ready to go this bit here. So let's get rid of our queue free. Let's remove our little um, hash, uh, move that over. All right, so now when our player dies, instead of queuing free, it's going to run this game over scene, which we just set up. So let's save that again. Now let's go and test it and see if all of this works. So we should get our scene first, right? We can quit. There we go, quit works perfect. Play it again. This time we'll hit start, takes us into our world. Just want to, um, Actually, I was going to go to the other scene, but there's not much point because I still haven't set up any enemies in there, so I couldn't die. Um, so we've lost one life, lost two lives, and hopefully when we lose this one, we go to our game over scene. Yes, how good is that? So play again. It works perfect. There we go. That is everything I wanted to achieve. So let's have a look at our must may might. And then don't forget, I'll be making heaps more videos, but they'll probably be shorter, just really focused on particular ideas that you can improve your platformer with. All right, let's look at our must may might.